Hi, Architect here. I like to keep a pretty positive outlook when I do these videos, but there's one area of video games that's been kind of bugging me recently, and that is the issue of pacing. Especially in the last few years, there's been a big focus on squeezing as much content out of games as possible, and this happens at the expense of that content being delivered in an effective way. Obviously, the biggest guilty party here is open world collect ups like Shadow of Mordor and pretty much every Ubisoft game. In order to explain myself here, I've got to go into a little bit of literary theory, so allow me to quickly explain the concept of story graphs and narrative arcs. In any good story, the plot hooks you in, then explains itself, before gradually upping the tension and action until it peaks near the end, ready for a resolution. This is what we in the biz call a narrative arc, and while there are absolutely exceptions, like the anticlimax used a great effect in War of the Worlds, it is though a pretty good rule of thumb for telling a story. There are a lot of ways to show this information. I'm a fan of Kurt Vonnegut's model myself. He does this whole positive and negative space thing on the Y axis where he shows positive action and negative action. It's really, really cool. But for easiest sake, we'll stick to the simple graph. Let's explain this with Star Wars. The early part, the hook, needs to get the viewer's attention. This is the bit on Leia's ship. It poses a lot of cool questions we'll wonder about as the film goes on. I want to know what happened to the plans they sent you. I don't know what you're talking about. The exposition portion needs to set the stage for the story and explain what's going on. This is where we're introduced to Luke, Obi-Wan, Han and Chewie. From there we're led across a variety of ups and downs, all contributing towards our final battle to destroy the Death Star. After that, the action drops right back down as we get a nice wrap up. Particularly observant people might have noticed that we can apply these same graphs not just to the stories of video games, but also to their mechanics. Think about the opening to say, Portal. It hooks you right in with the central gimmick of the game and all the possibilities it offers. Then gradually you learn how it works until you've mastered it, by which time the stage is set for an awesome finale and a nice conclusion. The narrative arc guides the player forward, by promising greater action, tougher challenges and satisfying story beats. These arcs needn't take a whole game to resolve either. Each Mario level is a little self-contained narrative arc. Koyoshi Hoshida, I hope I said that name right, explains that each of the levels in a Mario game are based on a structure in Chinese poetry called... Oh god, here we go. Kisho Tenketsu. Maybe. A four-part poem which just so happens to follow the structure of the narrative arc. Each Mario level starts out by introducing a core concept, the hook or key. Then it's expanded upon as you begin to master it through successively more challenging iterations, show. Next comes the rising action to climax as the level tests your understanding of the level mechanic with a twist, which is called 10, and finally the level is brought to a satisfying conclusion with a little flourish of the mechanic to end the level, Ketsu. Of course, it doesn't end there. The Mario game as a whole also has arcs that span worlds, and an overall arc of mechanical mastery that spans the whole game. Arcs within arcs within arcs within arcs, it's brilliant. But let's not forget I was here to complain, so what are some examples of video games that do this stuff badly? The first thing that comes to mind is Gunpoint. It starts off strong, introducing a really interesting core mechanic in the form of the ability to rewire all of these electric circuits. It's great fun pulling off a bunch of cool heists by manipulating guards into opening rewired doors and sneaking through the shadows you created by disabling all of the light switches. The problem is, as interesting as the rewiring mechanic is, it falls short of really letting you master it. The game never really lets you off the leash, and all the levels feel like they're trying to teach you something, to the point that there's no real way to be creative. Gunpoint's graph totally falls flat during the rising action portion, meaning that when it tries to bring things all together with this building scaling finale, it kind of misses the mark. Besides a cute little joke with a door that slams in people's faces, this feels like just another level because Gunpoint's narrative arc never reaches the heights required for a good conclusion and just leaves you wishing for another hour or two of gameplay. This is made up for somewhat by the wealth of great user-made levels, but I feel like that doesn't really redeem the shoddy midsection. Tom Francis, the guy who made Gunpoint, has kind of an annoying habit of making really interesting systems and then just not doing enough with them. His newest game, Heat Signature, much like Gunpoint, also flubs the third act by not letting you ever feel like you've mastered the game and are ready for a big conclusion. You might think the more open-ended games are exempt from the lessons of narrative arcs, and you'd be kind of right in fairness. It's certainly less of a tight structure. But even in strategy games, which typically have variable lengths and are pretty light on direct or vision, the narrative arc makes itself known, and usually not for the better. Northguard is a fun little light 4x that's in early access right now, and it has the same problem as a lot of other 4x's. They've got no real conclusion. 
Things are great on the arc front as you explore the world, build up your resources, and then forge ahead to your chosen victory condition, but that's where things just kind of end. At a certain point, building up your infrastructure any more than it already has been becomes impractical, and the game becomes an exercise in waiting for your inevitable victory. Sometimes there might be some sort of competition between two players, but owing to the nature of strategy games, committing resources towards disrupting your opponent's victory is committing to something other than winning the game yourself. The optimal plan in Northgard, as well as in other strategy games, is to turtle up and grind out your victory, interacting with other players as little as possible and denying yourself a satisfying end to the game. Warhammer Total War has an interesting take on this, with the late game events. Once alliances are formed, power blocks are established and the main players are moving in for the kill, in comes a huge chaos army that, to not put too fine of a point on it, fucks everyone's shit up. The chaos invasion or the big endgame rituals in Warhammer Total War 2 work to varying degrees of success, but they're exactly the kind of thing strategy games need, a way to break up the status quo that emerges towards the late game. Another way to keep players engaged is to pull the same trick as Mario and turn each individual encounter into its own mini story. XCOM is fantastic at this. Oh, what's that? You thought I'd finally decide to stop going on about this franchise? <laughs> Think again. XCOM missions hook you in with the mystery of what's waiting just around the corner. Set the scene as you explore the map looking for a fight, ratchet up the tension as you and the aliens duke it out, and offer some cathartic payoff by giving you a shiny new toy to play with, or sometimes a horrible new alien to get shot by once the mission is over. So, we've had a look at games that can benefit from some mechanical narrative arcs, but let's address the elephant in the room. How can we use narrative arcs to fit the games that really need it? Generic, open world, explorey, tower climbing games. Has this ever happened to you? Once you realise that this big open world with a lot of things to do is actually just 5 or 6 different things over and over again, you quickly lose enthusiasm for the game. With our knowledge of the narrative arc in hand, it's easy to realise why this happens. Basically, none of the conditions are being met. There's nothing new to be hooked into, we already know what everything is and how it works, We've likely already mastered these pretty simple tasks long before the end of the game, and worst of all, they never really get any harder or do anything to challenge us. To make matters worse, we can't even rely on good old fashioned storytelling to get the job done. By the nature of these games, there's no way for developers to control when you encounter story beats, throwing the pacing off. Towards the beginning of Far Cry 3, I should be doing everything I can to save my friends who've been kidnapped by the bad guys. But you know, it's real hard to fit that in between my busy schedule of climbing towers and collecting pretty leaves. So, how do we take these games and give them some nice, clean arcs? Well, making the games not lazy copy-paste jobs with zero passion behind them will be a start, but hey, we can't have everything. My first thought would be to lean into the non-linear nature of these games by giving players a plot that isn't time-sensitive. For ideas on how to do that, we need to look no further than The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, where once you've done the tutorial, you can challenge Ganon whenever you like. The rest of the game is framed as you powering up to face you before the big fight, the Ganon boss itself has its fair share of issues, but the idea of just letting the player skip most of the game is genius. Rather than force the player to start wading through reams of story content they've been avoiding in order to get to the final fight, players have the freedom to choose when they're ready to be done with the game and then just beat it. Once the player feels like that crucial third stage of the arc has reached a point where they're ready for a satisfying payoff, all they have to do is make their way to Hyrule Castle to go get it. This doesn't fix the issue of completionist players doing things that aren't fun anymore simply because the game is telling them to. It's part of a larger problem with padding in games. Normally, I'd have a go at publishers or game devs for missteps like these, but really players are to blame for this one. By demanding games with better playtime to money ratios, we sacrifice good storytelling. Take most of the games with great narrative arcs you can think of. They're probably all short, tightly designed games like Subsurface Circular, which is perfectly paced at just about two hours, or alternatively a longer game like Hitman, where each individual 20 minute mission is a little isolated story. The problem is that certain games just don't have the story or the mechanics to be stretched over tens of hours. The longer an arc is, the harder it's going to be to support the tension that's crucial to making stages 2 and 3, the meat of the story, work. Unfortunately, what's happening is that games that would otherwise be efficient, well-oiled storytelling machines are becoming bloated and sluggish because people don't want to pay for a short game. This can be seen very clearly in the gutting of Dragon Age Inquisition. The first game, Dragon Age Origins, runs at about 30 to 40 hours, and I felt like this was a bit long for content on display, but the story and combat are complex enough to warrant a game of that length, so I was pretty okay with it. Dragon Age Inquisition, on the other hand, is at least double that, with the combat dumped down to MMO levels and the quests getting the same treatment. 
while you can debate the relative merits of both games, there's no denying that Inquisition more than outstays its welcome. Slowing the pace of the actually quite good story to a crawl with boring fetch quests and zero strategy combat lessens the impact of the big plot character beats. The choice to make the combat cap out in complexity after about 5 hours into the game quickly turns encounters from interesting challenge into a bothersome chore that makes playing the game even harder. If I were to remake Dragon Age Inquisition, my first move would be to delete about two thirds of it. If a part of the game isn't contributing to the game's narrative worth or to its mechanics, then really it shouldn't be in the game in the first place. It's the only way you're going to be able to construct a good narrative arc that will keep people enjoying your game. The narrative arc is a great technique for driving player engagement, and is an awesome template for developers to use. But it isn't the silver bullet. Just like in any other medium, it's no substitute for, you know, actually making a good game. Near Automata is, objectively speaking, pretty terribly paced. The first 30 hours is all exposition and setup for a whirlwind finale that takes about 8 to 10 hours. Despite that, it's easily my favourite game narrative of the year. This is because, even though it has a rubbish arc, it's loaded with so many cool ideas that it doesn't matter. Even if you've got no intention of becoming a game designer, keep an eye out for games that use arcs well and support them when they do. Seriously, try to stop thinking about games in terms of a price to content ratio. I guarantee you that if you give a shorter, more densely packed game a go over a bloated AAA mess, you'll find a much richer experience and a much better narrative arc waiting for you inside. What's up? Uh, it's been a bit of a while since I've done one of these, but I have a few announcements to make. First up, sorry this video's a bit late, I was working on another one that I had to ditch because it kind of wasn't really coming together very well, so that was a week wasted. I'm going to try and get another one out before the end of the year, it's going to be probably some sort of like wrap up 2017 games you should have played, not, you know, that's the year, not the number of games you should have played, that's, that's asking a bit much, uh, but yeah, who knows though, like, I'm going to do whatever. Uh, secondly, this one's actually the important one, there's now 250-ish subscribers on the channel. Woo! So, uh, yeah, should I start a Patreon? Should I get sponsored by Loot Crate or Squarespace or someone? Because those guys will just give, they'll give anyone money, basically, it's ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, seriously, um, thanks a lot for subscribing, I'm happy that so many people like the videos, in spite of how opinionated I am. If you've not subscribed already, um, do that, please. Um, yeah, and oh, obviously sharing these videos and stuff is a big help, so that would be fantastic if you could do that too. That is about it, um, ho ho ho, happy holidays, and bye! <laughs>